to run chorus. So all these things they tell you, don't stay where you are not appreciated, only stay with people, you will end up staying with people that only say yes to you. And, and, and remember, growth is a function of quality diet. So what will happen is that you are removing quality from your diet, yourself. And that's why you love people. Right? So, human systems, that's why the question is about Human systems are designed, or the humanity or the human body is designed in systems. The world is designed in systems. Because God is sending us a message that if you want to be here for long, and if you want to conquer it, you must understand systems. Right? Now look at Jesus operating systems. I want to show you Jesus operating systems intelligence at the highest level. Look at this. Just look at this. By the way, while he was sitting in Judas, one of the twelve, suddenly arrived a large mob with swords and with clubs was with him from the chief priest and the elders of Jacob. His betrayer had given them a sign. The one I kiss. Are you are you with me? Mm -hmm. He said, the one I kiss, he is the one arresting. So he went right up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Matthew 24, 47, 49. Have you ever thought to yourself? Didn't they know who Jesus yeah. was? Yeah. Why did they have to kiss him? Why did Jesus have to point and Judas have to point Jesus out? Because vital organs are hidden. The more vital the organ, the more God wants to hide it. So I said, so the of God has been man, friends, choice, stones. What does he do? He goes, he buys the field that he, he hides it, then he buys the field. So Jesus ran a system where you couldn't tell him apart from his disciples. He didn't have to be the one on the billboard. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You know, this thing I'm saying, if you run an office where they cannot tell you apart from your employees because everybody's growing at that pace, eh? they come, they say they're looking for a gun. The day they are coming for you, you just say, ah, it's not here. <laughs> Jesus ran a system. This thing blows my mind. Jesus ran a system that Judas had to pick him out for the soldiers to understand, to see him. Ah, I just to understand. Now in system, systems are not people dependent, they are system dependent. So you run a proper system that was able to run after he died. Peter became bishop of the church. He was able to run. If he ran a system that was all about him, it would have crumbled. Right? So those who have deep desire to be popular are at least able to run successful systems. Systems owners are not afraid to allow the talents to thrive on their system. Jesus showed us. Right? But I'm still going to eat one by one. Thank God. Great. Now, how systems work? Remember, I said these are exact words that you cannot fight. Blood for blood. How systems work, right? Blood for blood. So, Abel and Cain, Cain and Abel, you know the story. Brought offerings before God. I like this picture because of the way. Cain was looking at it like a wall. <laughs> and Cain brought that offering to God. And, 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 and people always make it seem as if Cain's heart was black. It wasn't black in the beginning, right? He made, they both made an offering to God. God accepted one. God did not accept the other. Why? After much study, I discovered. He said Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Abel brought the firstborn of the soul. God accepted only one of the offerings. The Lord had regard for Abel's offering, but for Cain. You know why? Because Abel brought blood. Hebrews now explains it later. I said, by faith. Eh? And if faith comes by hearing, how could Abel operate by faith without hearing? Right? So Abel was a time spender with God. Yes, and that's why he knew that the only offering that you could bring for forgiveness of sins was blood. And that's how the system works. You have to know, ignorance is not acceptable. Cain brought the fruit of the ground and God had already cursed the ground, so the product of the curse could not take away the curse. God did not reject Cain, he rejected his offering. But Cain saw it as a rejection of him. 
So Cain brought the fruit of the ground and said to him, <coughs> oh God had already caused the ground. So the product of the cause cannot what? Take him the cause. Abel brought it. Blood. Call it nature. Well, you have to know the way systems work. work. Exact laws you cannot fight. Now, if you come back to Psalm 24, how do businesses scale? Or how do you scale activities? Right? God starts by saying, or how do you connect? He says, God laid a claim on the earth in Psalm 24. He said, The earth is the Lord's and its fullness, the world that day. He said, I have freehold ownership. Right? I'm the owner. I want to give the ownership to people, but I have freehold. So he said, The earth is the Lord's and its fullness. The world and they that dwell therein. Right? Even described how he founded it and established it. He now said, Who shall ascend into the heat of the Lord? So God says, I own the earth. I found established on the mountains. This is me. I own it. He said, But who shall ascend into the hill? Right? Who shall stand in his holy place? That talks about two things clean hands and the pure hands. They are not the same. The problem is we do one and then we say it's not working. Clean hands and what? The pure hands. So clean hands signifies the outward interaction with men. And the people and with everything around you. Right? <coughs> Only those with clean hands in their dealings and interaction can ascend the heat of the Lord. Clean hands, outward interaction. Just what you do, right? Pure heart, right? Is inward condition of a man's heart. Alignment with God. The easiest way to ascend the heat of the Lord is to throw away your own personal agenda. Now, this is the problem with going and doing the prayer meeting thing without a pure heart. A lot of people are praying without a pure heart. They, they've taught us from when we were small that you need to have clean hands. So if you get to the altar, if there's any sin, you lay it at the altar. <laughs> if your friend has offended you like she always offends me, I lay it at the altar. I say, God, forgive her. I forgive her. Right? Mm-hmm. They taught us that. So we know about clean hands. Mm-hmm. But we don't know about pure heart. So when you go to God in prayer, you say, that's the guy I want to marry, oh Lord. That's in pure heart. No, when you go to God in prayer, you're supposed to say, God, any guy you give me, I'm taking because I trust you. That's why he's saying that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness or alignment with God, he said they shall be what? Filled. So God, I want to be an oil and gas. God said, I don't want you for oil and gas. I'm not paid for it. I, I, because oil and gas is always making money. I, and the guy is dead. 10 years, no, no, no mobility, nothing. And it's still going. What God cannot do does not exist. Every morning he's praying. Because he has an impure heart. God says, ah, it's still nails I wanted to send. Because in all labor there is profit. I want to send nails. In all labor there is profit. But if you want to ascend, you must come with what? And that pure heart is very important. And that pure heart means God, I have no agenda here. Your agenda is my agenda. If you say we shouldn't have it, then we don't want it. That's tough. It's tough, but that's the only way. Right? Now, I'll stay here in this because. This is one of the places I want to go. Now, every provision of redemption has conditions attached to it. And I want you to take note of this because it's very important. Every provision of redemption has conditions attached to it. And if you want to access the provision, you need to meet the condition. Do you hear me? If you want to access the provision, you need to meet what? The conditions. So, provision number one, mercy. Mercy is secured by the blood of Jesus. People always mistake mercy and grace. It's not the same thing. And if you don't understand, it's not the same thing. You cannot apply it. 
There is a grace and favor. It's not the same thing. That's why the Bible does not use them interchangeably. So mercy is secured by the blood of Jesus. Again, it is set in the court scene, right? So we said, even in the judicial system today, what do you plead? Guilty or what? Not guilty. Right? The guy says, guilty means he did it. Not guilty means what? I didn't do it. Jesus introduced a third plea. That plea is what? The blood of Jesus. What does that third plea mean? It means I did it, but somebody has paid the price. Which means, because the judicial system, just like the spirit realm, just needs propitiation, which means somebody must take responsibility. Let me explain it to you this way. The law system wants to catch somebody and make one person pay the price. So let me explain it to you, to you this way. There's something in law called double jeopardy. Double jeopardy means that if I see that guy and I'm accused of killing him, hmm? but he didn't die, and they send me to jail. And after 20 years or something, they just noticed that I'm such a good, well behaved guy. Ah. Then one president comes and says, Pardon. Right? And they release me. And I'm walking down the streets of Ujuele Bath. And I see the guy <laughs> that they said I did, that I did 20 years for. You know what I can do? Pick up my phone, call the police. Call the judges and call the army. Hmm? Catch him, slaughter him there and then. Nobody can touch him. That's the law. Why? Who can guess why? I've saved the time. That's what Jesus said. I have saved the time for these people. You have no right over them. That's why you cannot function in the capacity as a lover of men and an accuser of the brethren. You have to choose one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those of you that accuse people, oh, this person did this to me, I hold on to it. You can't. Because that's not your job. You're doing the devil's work. God wants us to work in love, right? You cannot be a lover of people and an accuser, bringing accusations against people in the presence of God. That's the devil's work. Jesus said, by, the, by my blood that was shed, I have done the time. I have paid the ultimate price. Let that one go. And even though that was guilty, once that says I'm guilty, that's the law of double jeopardy. That's the principle of mercy and the blood. So Paul misbehave and then run away from God. That's the time to run towards him. Say, ah, but I'm unclean. God does not try to clean fish before he catches it. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm it's us that we try that. So that's the principle of mercy. The second is righteousness. Righteousness is essentially alignment with God and it's a free gift. Once you obtain mercy, right, then you have righteousness. It's free. Now, righteousness is not purity. Again, we were taught that they're the same thing. It's not. Purity is a journey. Right, so if you have this bad habit, then you obtain this. It's not going to disappear. You will now start the journey of the word of God. Working in you to get... Do you understand? Yeah. So righteousness is alignment. Now, now, righteousness, I've taught it several times. I'll say it again. Alignment also means alignment with God's agenda. So righteousness does not necessarily respect whether you are a Christian or not. Right? The agenda of God. So sometimes when God does not find Christians who are lying, what does he do? Takes the notebook. <laughs> that's the life. That's it. Who aligns with the agenda? So what does he say? Just write your question. Write the question. <laughs> 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 
He said I was young. Now I'm old. He said I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor in sick begging bread. Which means that if a man will align with my agenda, he can never be left alone, and his children or his business, everything that comes out of him, will never beg for investors. If he will align. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That word name actually means the reputation of God. is a strong tower, right? He said the righteous run into it and is saved. Only the aligned can run into it. How do you know you are aligned? Prophecy, covenant. I talked it the other day. And the covenant is what? It's secured by commitment. Coming to God's agenda. God, anything you are selling, we are buying. That's all. Not, oh God, I want this one. That's your agenda. Kill it. Because we know that regardless of who cuts our check, it is God that pays us. It's us. What are we doing? What are, why, why am I fighting? It doesn't make sense to me that people fight God's agenda. First of all, you will still come back in the end. Yes. So, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. And so that's righteousness. So it says with the heart, Romans 10, man believes unto righteousness. So, so, so God says something, you're doubting, you're struggling, right? Your heart is the organ that helps you believe unto alignment, unto your alignment. The moment you're aligned, he said with the mouth, confession is made. So you don't talk until you're aligned. The moment you're aligned, he said you say the same thing as God. That word confession means homo logio, to say the same thing. But if you're not aligned and you talk, you just be saying different things. So God had to take the speech of Zacharias away from him. You know, and I said, I started telling that it was punishment. It's a lie. It's not punishment. Just took it away from him. Because John the Baptist was so systemically important. I could not allow him to wreck it. So when he asked him, and he, uh, how shall this thing be? The angel said, <laughs> Okay, this one, this one is going to spoil the plan. Because this child cannot wait. Jesus has to come, right? This particular child can only take his speech. Why? Because sound creates light. But sound also creates darkness. <laughs> so before this one spoils the plan, let's take away his speech. So he took his speech. The minute the child was born and he wrote his name, he gave him the speech. Like, oh, you can't spoil it. So God is not wicked. God is not a mad girl. He's not the wicked man that you think, ah, because he didn't believe him. He took away his speech. Who is teaching you about God? That's trauma. That's that's a wicked God. It's not wicked. He took away his speech because he did not want him to truncate that. And he gave it back to him. He borrowed it. Right? The third thing is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the executive power of God on the earth. And as a provision of redemption, he must be asked for. Right? So he says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon you, Isaiah 11. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might. Then he now goes in the New Testament and says, If you then be evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? You have to ask for the Holy Spirit. Look, it does not, you have to ask. So you see, that's the provision, that's the condition. That's why we have all these songs that say, Mimi more, That's why we have all these songs. Welcome, Holy Spirit. It was inspired so that people can ask and learn how to ask. Spirit of God, we welcome you. I have to ask. Right? Now, prayer. Prayer is communication with God and it makes tremendous power available. Prayer is not the executive power of God. Prayer does not have implementation capability. So people that pray and don't act. It's poverty. And you know, there were only people like that. Adonijah had declared himself king. And they came to meet David. So there's a revolution. David said, let me show you about it. He said, get me a priest, someone who will pray to God. So they brought Zadok. He said, get me a prophet, someone who will bring God's answer. So after Zadok's work was finished, 
to pray. Nathan took over and brought the answer. Then Benaiah took over as the soldier and carried out the instruction. So he said, get me three men. Priest, prophet, soldier. David was smart. Even in his old age. All the parts of him had died, but his brain was still alive. I know all the parts of him had died because they put the young girl beside him and Kabi did not do anything. <laughs> and we know Kabi Ezidi, they, <laughs> they fire normally. <laughs> but even at that, I'm telling you that his mind was still agile. And he said, bring, he could have said, oh, bring Zadok. Zadok, for your prayer. Zadok would just be praying, 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 praying. Then God would be like, okay, so. So I tell you what I'm thinking now. <laughs> so some of you just pray, 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 pray. Sometimes, not every time, pray. Sometimes just sit down and listen. Sometimes, understand. Now, let me tell you this. If you are a prayer warrior and you're a stubborn person that God cannot reach, you're in trouble. Hebrew says God, who at sundry times and in diverse manner, manners, spoke to us through the agency of the prophets, is now speaking to his son. So Another prerequisite for reaping the benefits of prayer is that you must be able to say, God, whatever you tell me, I'm doing, however and whoever you send. So you pray, 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 pray. I find that people a lot like that. And then God now sends someone unlikely to you. And you say, God cannot speak to me through this one. Can't be God's God. God, you're praying now, but <laughs> I've been sending answers since. Since. So it's a combination. And then you have to have the courage to increment. That, that's the third thing, the courage. For you to reap the fruit of prayer. Right? Well, <coughs> you know, even though it's been bastardized, you know, we have to secure by giving. Look, God's social economic plan is steeped in giving. Jesus stood at the temple. Mm-hmm. That if I don't take things for free, be the hand that gives. Jesus stood at the, at the, at the temple where people are giving their offering, right? And then this woman, woman came with her last widow's might. Two coins. I said, but Jesus stood her, exempted her. Why didn't he exempt her? That's the only way. That's the only way out of it. The man of God showed up. He said, give me food, let me eat. That was our last one. But the man of God was not wicked. He knew that that's the only way out. That if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. So we have a secured by giving. This is how God did, God did it. So when you plow your field, he said, don't plow everything. Right? He said, and don't go back. To check if you left anything. He said, leave the rest for the poor and the stranger. He said, I am the, I am the Lord your God. You know, when God puts I am the Lord of God behind such a commandment, he said, because it's me that is feeding all of you. It's not your hard work. It's not Nanda, Kobo. It's not it's me that is feeding you. So I have to, I am the Lord, I am the supplier. Do not defraud each other. I said, when he fraud, which one is fraud on top? You said, I should give the poor and sweet. When I read it closely, I now realize that anytime you eat 100% of your income, you are defrauding the people God has passed their income through. They are eating your future seed. And luck is coming. So he says, don't eat everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't eat everything. Live for them. Because I have passed their money through you, don't defraud one another, don't defraud them. Very powerful. That's God's social economic plan. <coughs> so he put that cycle in place so that what? You can keep giving. And once you keep giving, you know, you know Zeus, the word for money is Zeus, Latin, in Latin or Greek, and it means circulation. Current, it means current, or currency, current. That's why we call it currency. Right. It must be, if you lock it, it will, it, will, it will run away from you. It must be in what? Alright. Power is the ability of God and power must be paid for. 
I want you to spend time with God. Pray. You, you will express meekness. <laughs> God will take things from you. And when he sees that you are ready to give him everything, he will give you power. Economy and all sorts of power. You must show commitment to his agenda. And then you get the power. Then you become a force of the earth that nobody can deal with and understand. Globally, the covenant an eternal agreement with God that is secured by commitment. I thought of this Abraham several times. Right? Eternal agreement. And when I say eternal, generation to generation. That is secured by commitment. Faith. Faith is the creative power of God and the life force of God. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? And in order to ensure faith works, what did God do? He ensured that everything has ears. So he was creating the fish and he spoke to the water. He was creating the crawling things and he spoke to the ground. He said, speak to the mountain. Speak to the dry bones. That's what he did to ensure that faith can do everything. Right? And also to ensure that faith is not time bound. Right? He ensured that when people die or things die, hearing does not go with them. Hearing stays. That's the only way resurrection power comes. So he spoke to Lazarus four days after he was dead. Ezekiel spoke to the dry bones years after they were dead. Right? These things are just procedural things we are dealing with. Final one, the anointing. The anointing is food. There's no way that we can and it is referred to as the power of God. I don't know where we got it. It's food. It's actually, it translates food. And the idea is this. That the Bible says that the body shall be removed, right? And the yoke shall be what? Destroyed because of the Abi? anointing. So this was the what they were saying. They were saying that when they wanted to plow a field like this, they would tie two ox, oxen together, yoke them together with a wooden yoke, right? Strong and weak, or weaker and stronger. So the stronger pulled the weaker and they pulled each other, and that energy that they created was used to plow the field. Does that make sense? Now, that yoke could not be broken. The only thing that could break the yoke was that the neck of the oxen through the food that it eats would outgrow the yoke and break it. So when they said the body will be removed and the yoke destroyed, what they were saying is that you would eat to the point that you would outgrow your limitations. And I said, <laughs> growth is a function of what? Quality diet. You have to ask yourself what you are eating, what you are dieting on. Spend time in the world of God. It's, look, it's the best business book. It's the best business book to help your mental health, your economic health, everything. So he said the yoke will be destroyed. And the body shall be what? Removed. Because of the anointing. So those are the provisions of redemption. 